presented by Jim Johns of Lightroom. Hello, everyone. Welcome to week 13 of Armchair Quarterback, week two of the playoff edition. It's a weekly high school football show spotlighting local high school teams, players, and coaches in the mountains. Tonight, we'll have a complete recap of last week's high school football from around the region. Of course, top individual performances, huge upsets, week one of the playoffs, and there were some big blowouts. Tonight, we'll also have highlights from around the region, coaches' interviews, and we'll unveil this week's computer ratings. It's playoff time, and we'll have a look at the round two matchups in Kentucky and the first round in West Virginia. The UPike Bears also will close out the season this Saturday, Senior Day for 17 seniors. All that's coming up, and we'll get it started in many years. Round one of the Kentucky High School football playoffs features several blowouts, and this year had its fair share. 42 30-point-plus margins in week one of the playoffs. Here's a look at last week's results from around the area. Paintsville defeated Nicholas County 41-21. It was Hazard 50-22 over Pineville. Lynn Camp escaped Phelps 32-26. Pikeville rolled over Harlan 47-14. In AA, it was Danville 57-16 over East Ridge. Prestonsburg defeated Middlesbrough 35 14. Somerset shut out Shelby Valley 42 0. In Class 3A, Belfry rolled over Thomas Nelson out of Bardstown 63 26, while Louisville Central blanked Pike Central 50 0. It was Corbin all over Knott Central 57 6, and Floyd Central in a shootout with Henry County gets the win 43 35. Louisville Wagner rallied to defeat Lawrence County 41-24 in Class 4A, Ashland Blazer 52-6 over Holmes, while Johnson Central shut down Mason County 43-0. In 5A, it was Southwestern 56-8 over Perry Central. And each week, we spotlight top performances from the week and the area's leaders in rushing and touchdowns, etc. Here's last week's big numbers. From Belfry, Avery Browning, 171 total yards and a touchdown. Derek Wellman had four touchdowns. Justin Adkins of Belfry, 181 total yards and two scores. Eastridge, Zach Ramey, 143 yards rushing and two touchdowns. Floyd Central's Dylan Cottle, 299 total yards and four touchdowns. Caleb Hager had 126 yards receiving and a touchdown and Ethan Howard doing it defensively, 10 tackles on the night. Hazard's Bailey Blair had 220 total yards and three touchdowns. Braxton Whitaker caught two touchdown passes, had 112 receiving. Matthew Francis with 109 yards on the ground and two touchdowns. Blake Gamble of Johnson Central ran for 128 yards and a touchdown, while quarterback Riley Priest threw three touchdown passes he also had three interceptions defensively. Mingo Central's Jeremy Dillon. It's week in and week out, big yards, 463 total yards, four touchdowns rushing, four touchdowns passing. Dawson Eli had 167 total yards and two scores. Paintsville's Tyrese Allen, the big guy, the WVU commit, had three touchdowns on the ground. And Pikeville quarterback, Connor Roberts, ran for three touchdowns and threw three touchdown passes. And finally, Tug Valley's Jonathan Blankenship totaled 210 yards and four touchdowns. And of course, as some of our coverage area teams are eliminated from the playoffs, we still spotlight the leading rushers in the area. Seth Johnson of Shelby Valley in his final game of the season goes over the 2,000 yard mark. 2,013 yards. Jaden Neese of Perry Central, 1,754. Blake Gamble of Johnson Central with 1,508 yards rushing. Ethan Varney of Prestonsburg, 1,506. Noah West of Lawrence County in the fifth spot with 1,425 yards on the ground. Seth Kahn of Pike Central totaled 1,236 yards for the season, while Jonathan Blankenship of Tug Valley Went over the 1,200-yard mark at 
Dawson Eagle Eye of Mingo Central, 1163. Ty Holland of Knott Central, 1022. And Belfry's Derek Wellman closing in on 1,000 yards rushing. He's at 982. And who's accounted for the most touchdowns from players around the area? Well, naturally, Jeremy Dillon of Mingo Central. Rushing, passing defensively, he's totaled 51. Cameron Jones of Knott Central in the second spot with 32. Jonathan Blankenship of Tug Valley doing it all. He had 27 touchdowns accounted for. Seth Kahn of Pike Central will end the season with 26. Ethan Varney of Prestonburg with 25. And Noah West of Lawrence County with 24 touchdowns. A tie in the seventh spot, Blake Gamble of Johnson Central and Dawson Eli of Mingo Central with 23 apiece. And a tie in the ninth spot, Riley Priest of Johnson Central and Bailey Blair, a couple of quarterbacks totaling 22 touchdowns on the season. Those are a, a look at some big performances individually for the season and last week. We're just getting started with this edition of Armchair Quarterback. Highlights on the way, coaches' interviews, the Super 7 and the playoff matchups for the week. It's brought to you by Jimmy John's Gourmet Sandwiches. We'll be right back. Jimmy, and this has been my definition of fresh since 1983. The good folks at Howard Family Pharmacy grew up right here in Eastern Kentucky. They know this town just as well as they know their customers. You want to be greeted by a friend and a pharmacist you know and trust. Come see Wes Howard, Tiffany Jacobs, and Lauren Mullins at Howard Family Pharmacy. Located at Eastern, near Allen Central High School. Call or visit HowardFamilyPharmacy.com. Most insurance plans are accepted, late hours, and open on Saturday, too. Howard Family Pharmacy. The high school football playoffs continue on EKB TV. Brought to you by Paul Howard Jr., Attorney at Law, and the Golden Corral Restaurant in Pikeville. This week, the Wagner Wildcats come to battle the Belfry Pirates. The game of the week airs Saturday at 7 and Sunday at 4 and 8.30, only on EKB TV. For the clearest, most up-to-date look at your weather, check out the EKB Weather Cam. Brought to you by American Heating and Cooling. Get a bird's eye view of the skies above Pikeville. Rain or shine, day or night, watch for the EKB Weather Cam every day at 6 and 10. Brought to you by American Heating and Cooling. Welcome back to Armchair Quarterback. In Kentucky, double-A playoff first round action at Tico Field last week. Shelby Valley, the two seed hosting the Somerset Briar Jumpers, a very good number three seed out of District 7, one of the toughest 2A districts in the state. Early on, Shelby Valley playing field position, Seth Johnson, Will Pottage, and uh, it's a mistake when Josh Cornett's on the receiving end. He's got a big return all the way down the sideline before being drugged down deep in Valley territory. Somerset, a big way to get this one started. That'll lead to quarterback Mason Reese looking to throw, and he'll find wide receiver Zach Childers in the end zone. Touchdown, Briar jumpers. They go on top early. Later in the game, Somerset with possession. Reese hands off to Ty Tevis. He'll find a hole and to the sideline, to the pylon, touchdown, Somerset. The Briar Jumpers win big, 42-0 over Shelby Valley, and will face Danville next week. 
In single A, first round action at the Hambly Complex, Pikeville hosting Harlan. The Panthers dressed in the black uniforms and Pikeville jumped out early in this one. The Panthers in Harlan territory early on. Connor Roberts will hit Jackson Hensley, a hesitation move, and he goes to the end zone for the touchdown. Connor Roberts again in the shotgun. He'll give to Zach Roberts this time, up the middle, then he makes a man miss, gets to the sideline, and to the end zone for six more. Pikeville wins big, 47-14 to advance. Next up, the Panthers go to Williamsburg. The final play of that Pikeville Harlan game was a special one, though. Check this out. Ball on uh, on their own 40-yard line. Watch this, guys. The Panthers fumble. It is picked up by Kyle Allison of Harlan. On the fumble, Allison. The five to the end zone, touchdown Green Dragons. That it. makes it all worth it right there. It does, what a tremendous moment, what a tremendous memory. Kyle Allison of Harlan, a highly functioning autistic student, scoring the touchdown on the fumble recovery. The Panthers, a team that played one of the toughest non-district single A schedules in the state, have started to play their best football of the year. Here's Pikeville coach Chris McNamee with his thoughts on Williamsburg. Well, I think our guys came out ready to play. Um, you know, we knew that, you know, playoff, you know, first round of playoffs and, you know, the past few years it's been, we've, we've been a one seed going against a four seed. And, um, you know, we have to approach that a little bit differently this year because we were two going against a three. And uh, we felt like Harlan was going to be a little better competition than what we've paid, faced in the past. But our guys, we got off to a good start, I thought, offensively and defensively, and uh, were able to pull away there early. I think for the whole month of um, September, we were on the road. And, and one of those trips being out to Callaway County, which was a seven-hour bus ride. Um, but we, we try to use that as an example of, uh, you know, what we did well and, and didn't do well on that trip. and. Uh, how we can make this trip better. And of course, this game's a little more meaningful than that. Um, being able to stay focused and, and all that uh, will be a big part of this week. Well, really good football team. And, um, you know, we played them two years ago uh, in the playoffs, and they were they were all freshmen and sophomores, and now they're all juniors and seniors. So um, it's uh, I know they're a more experienced team. Quarterback does a really nice job throwing the ball. Has some good receivers to throw it to. Um, you know, they've uh, had a couple linemen go out with the injury this year, uh, but still a solid football team. Uh, won that district over there. Had a bye this past week, so they've had two weeks to get ready for us, and uh, it's going it's to be a, a big challenge for us. That's Pikeville and Williamsburg coming up Friday night. We've got more on the way. Don't go anywhere. I'm back with more right after this. It's brought to you by Jimmy John's Gourmet Sandwiches, Pikeville Commons. Jimmy, and this has been my definition of fresh since 1983. The good folks at Howard Family Pharmacy grew up right here in Eastern Kentucky. They know this town just as well as they know their customers. You want to be greeted by a friend and a pharmacist you know and trust. Come see Wes Howard, Tiffany Jacobs, and Lauren Mullins at Howard Family Pharmacy. Located at Eastern, near Allen Central High School. Call or visit HowardFamilyPharmacy.com. Most insurance plans are accepted, late hours, and open on Saturday, too. Howard Family Pharmacy. Hi, I'm Ronnie Hilton. Join us this Thanksgiving on EKB TV for Wandering Around the Hills. We're taking cameras to where they've never been before. These places, they ain't just on the side of the road or a place you can drive to. These are places that you really have to work to get to. And we're gonna be happy to bring you incredible footage from areas that most people have never seen and they're right here at home. So tune in Thanksgiving, EKB TV, 
Wandering Around the Hills with Ronnie Hilton. I'm Jimmy, and this has been my definition of fresh since 1983. Welcome back to Armchair Quarterback. We continue with last week's highlights. And Friday night, the Belfry Pirates began defense of their Kentucky 3A state title. Cam Stadium was the scene as Thomas Nelson out of Bardstown made the trip to the mountains in round one of the Commonwealth Gridiron Bowl. The Pirates get things started. Avery Browning running the option. He'll pitch to Justin Adkins and he'll get Belfry deep in Thomas Nelson territory. Later Browning with the handoff up the middle. Derek Wellman, the big fullback, he breaks free into the end zone for six. Belfry will force a general's punt, Devin Varney will field it for the Pirates. He's got open field to the near sideline and he's brought down, but not before a huge return. Browning now takes the snap and surveys the field. Nothing open, so he'll tuck it and run. He'll break a tackle and another, and he'll get upfield to set up the first down. Again, Browning under center, this time gives it to Wellman straight up the gut, and it's off to the races. 35 yards untouched for Wellman. The Pirates now looking to add to the lead. Browning will drop back to pass. He'll fire deep down the near sideline. Justin Adkins holds it in for the huge pickup. The Pirates now trying to cap off the drive. Wellman one more time up the middle. Touchdown, Belfry. The Pirates roll 63-26 over Thomas Nelson and advance to round two of the playoffs. Louisville Wagner will be at Belfry. It's our EKB TV game of the week. And while the Belfry Pirates continue to roll against Class 3A opponents, Belfry currently riding a 21-game playoff win streak. We spoke to Belfry head coach Philip Haywood about last week's win and this week's opponent. Uh, it wasn't uh, necessarily a great performance, but it was uh, we played well, and Thomas Nelson had a good football team. I, I, I told everyone they did things well. Their record was a little bit deceiving because we felt like they played a tough schedule coming in with some of the teams there in Central Kentucky, and they executed well. But offensively, we played very well, and our defense kind of got going along with that and did what we needed to do to kind of put the game away. So we were pleased with our kids' performance. Our young guys played the entire second half and added a couple of scores on. So uh, we advanced, and that's what you have to do in the playoffs. You're not always going to play your very best every night, and, and you certainly wouldn't want to necessarily do it in, your, in the first round. Well, a, a lot of similarities between, say, this week and, you know, five weeks ago, but it's – you know, I think uh, one of our coaches made the comment that we just need to pay attention to detail. We just got to do the little things right because uh, at this point in the season, you know, everybody kind of knows your offense, knows your defense. When you play different opponents, they know what you're going to do. It's how well that you can execute your offense, uh, how well uh, you play your defense, how well you understand what your opponent is trying to do to you. So as long as we can do those things and, and pay attention to the little things and get better at those things, that's always our goal is get a little better each day and a little better each week. And I think with as much youth as we have on this team, you know, we've got a good blend of seniors, uh, but not a, necessarily a whole lot of experience. So I still think we have some growth uh, to go on this team, and hopefully we'll get to play long enough to where we can reach our full potential. Uh, but these guys, the one, they've got one great characteristic. They play hard. Uh, they, they get behind. Uh, they, they get shots thrown at them early in a game. Uh, so they, they, they're kind of used to that. And then defensively, we're not real big. Uh, but we just get in there and battle people, and it doesn't really matter what the score is or if the team moves the ball on us or anything like that. We just line up and play hard and play the next play. And I, I think that's the one thing I like about this team. I remember one night in the locker room at halftime, 
Uh, you know, another team had been moving the ball on us, but we were really battling them and hanging in there in the game. And, and I, I just made the comment to them and said, you know, I'm starting to like you guys. And, and that, that's, that's kind of this football team. Their MO is, is we're going to play hard. We'll, we'll play with you all night long. Something that does concern us a little bit because we haven't really played a spread team in about a month. It's been a while since somebody's lined up in a gun and spread us out and got all that speed and quickness. And, and Huntington was like that, Bryan Station was like that, but that was really early in the season. So I'm not sure how we're going to react to this the first couple of series in the game. It's almost like we're going to have to get used to it again because of the style of play we've had for the last month of the season. The key to victory is going to be containing them, taking away big plays, and then controlling the line of scrimmage. The Pirates host Louisville Wagner Friday night. It will also be Veterans Recognition Night at KM Stadium. All veterans in attendance will be introduced at halftime. The Belfry community invites each of you to join them in paying tribute to our veterans for their service to our country. And Friday night, the number two ranked Mingo Central Miners were on the road at number nine Winfield in the West Virginia regular season finale. The Generals looking to secure a home playoff game. The Miners with their sights on the, on the top seed. Jeremy Dillon. Mingo Central quarterback in the shotgun. He'll find Dawson Eli open down the sideline and into the end zone for Mingo's first score. Again, Dylan in the shotgun. He'll fake the handoff, then looks downfield, finds Drew Hatfield in stride and off to the races, a 72-yard touchdown. Mingo Central looking to add to their lead. Dylan runs play action. He'll fire the bomb and Josh Reed runs under it to make the catch. Another Miners touchdown. They needed all of those. Mingo Central wins a shootout 56-50 over Winfield and get the number one seed in AA. Jeremy Dillon, four touchdowns rushing, four touchdowns passing, and Mingo Central will host Robert C. Bird Saturday at 1.30. And speaking of Mingo Central and quarterback Jeremy Dillon, the two sports star signed a D1 basketball letter of intent with the Marshall Thundering Herd Wednesday. Here's Jeremy with his comments on signing with Marshall. I was just trying to take everything in and take it, take it a slow process so uh, I could make sure I made the right, right decision. And uh, I believe I've done that. I made the right decision. I feel like Marshall can be a second home to me. And uh, I really like... Uh, what then Tony does with the offense up there. I think uh, I'll have a lot of fun up there in the next few years playing for him. Yeah, he understands uh, what it's like to be overlooked. That's what a lot of West Virginia kids are uh, are done to. They, they're overlooked. He's uh, trying to bring the West Virginia kids together and uh, show them that they can play basketball too. He's quite a football player and now has signed with Marshall. Congratulations. After week one of the playoffs, the Lipkin House computer rankings were updated with the 16 teams remaining in each class in Kentucky. Here's a look at the breakdown by class. In the Lit ratings in 6A, Trinity, St. X, Scott County, Mail, and Simon Kenton, your top five. In 5A, it's Covcat, Southwestern, Bowling Green, South Oldham, and Christian County. In Kentucky, class 4A in the computer ratings, Wayne County at the top, followed by Johnson Central second, Collins third, Franklin Simpson, and then Ashland Blazer fifth. In Kentucky Class 3A, it's Boyle County in the top spot, followed by Belfry, Corbin, E-Town, and Louisville Central. The Pirates' next opponent, Wagner, is in at number nine, and Floyd Central at number 16. In Kentucky Class AA, according to the computer, Danville number one, then Lexington Christian, Mayfield, DeSales, Christian Academy of Louisville fifth, and Prestonsburg in at number 12 in Kentucky single A. Beachwood at number one, followed by Kentucky Country Day. Paintsville third, Raceland fourth, Hazard fifth. Pikeville in at number eight, and the Panthers opponent Williamsburg at number nine, according to the computer ratings. We've seen our share of some great football, more on the way, including the playoff matchups and U Pike Senior Day. It's coming up next. Brought to you by Jimmy John's Gourmet Sandwiches, Pikeville Commons.
I'm Jimmy, and this has been my definition of fresh since 1983. The high school football playoffs continue on EKB TV. Brought to you by Paul Howard Jr., attorney at law, and the Golden Corral Restaurant in Pikeville. This week, the Wagner Wildcats come to battle the Belfry Pirates. The game of the week airs Saturday at 7 and Sunday at 4 and 8.30, only on EKB TV. For the clearest, most up-to-date look at your weather, check out the EKB Weather Cam. Brought to you by American Heating and Cooling. Get a bird's eye view of the skies above Pikeville. Rain or shine, day or night. Watch for the EKB Weather Cam every day at 6 and 10. Brought to you by American Heating and Cooling. Are you tired of pushing pins? Is your boss the worst? Co-workers driving you bonkers. Those cubicle walls seem smaller every day, don't they? You need a change. Here at East Kentucky Broadcasting, we invite you to join our dynamic sales team. Trade in that cubicle for wide open spaces, endless income potential, benefits, travel reimbursements, but wait, there's more. Join our team today and find yourself among the region's top marketing experts. Rub elbows with sales most elite. Send your resume in or visit our glamorous studios to fill out an application in person. Welcome back to Armchair Quarterback. We've had a look at last week in detail in the playoffs. It's about survive and advance. Here's this week's coverage area teams matchups in week two. Coming up Friday, Lynn Camp will be at Hazard in single A action while Bracken County visits Paintsville. Pikeville at 6-4 on the road at Williamsburg to take on the Yellow Jackets. In double-A, Lexington Christian, 10-1, travels to Prestonsburg, the Black Cats, 7-4. In triple-A, Wagner is at Belfry. Floyd Central, they're on the road. They take an 8-3 record to face Louisville Central, who come in 9-2. In Kentucky, Class 4A, Johnson Central, 9-2, travels to Northern Kentucky to face Scott. And coming up Saturday, West Virginia Class AA playoff action. 16 seed Robert C. Byrd will be at Mingo Central's Buck Harless Stadium, a 1.30 kickoff. And in single A West Virginia playoff action, number 11 seed James Monroe will be at Tug Valley Saturday night, a 7.30 kickoff. Don't forget, Saturday afternoon at 1.30, it's senior day for the University of Pikeville Bears as UPike will say so long to 17 seniors from this year's team. That'll do it for this week's edition of Armchair Quarterback. Thanks so much for tuning in and enjoy this week's games. This has been Armchair Quarterback with Andrew Joyce, presented by Jimmy Johns of Pike.